Good morning. This is Tim with Outdoors for Adventure. Before we get this video started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to go hit that subscribe button and follow us on our adventures and events. Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about the Arkansas Overland Route Trailhawk Loop. We have a Facebook group page called Arkansas Overland Route Trailhawk Loop. So be sure to go check that Facebook group page out and join it. There's information and coordinates and uh, stuff you might want to know, pictures uh, about this route there. This route consists of over 300 miles and this route is mapped and published on the Onyx Off-Road app. So be sure to uh, get Onyx downloaded to your phone so you can follow this trail. Uh, there's information for each section, which is a total of 27 sections on the Onyx app. Now, I did take some notes because there, you're going to see a lot in this route. And it it starts at, off Highway 82 in the Falcon Bottoms area. You're going to follow Falcon Bottoms. Uh, you're going to be headed east into Arkansas and you're going to head toward Poison Springs WMA. Poison Springs, you can get a permit online to camp in that area if you choose to. There's a lot to see. There's a lot of dirt roads. And take note that if it's wet, some of these roads can be very messy. Uh, take uh, recovery gear, be sure that you have everything you need, which if you're doing overland routes, more than likely you already know all this. So you're going to go through Poison Springs, uh, you're going to see a cool cemetery, and then you'll have to backtrack out of there. And at the cemetery, you will want to avoid it if it's been raining a lot, because the road's going to be bad. Uh, after you leave that cemetery, you'll cut across there's going to be a mix of paved, very little paved, but some paved, a lot of dirt roads also can be bad when they're wet. And you're going to head on down to a place called Spoon Bend Camping Area that you can camp at. It's right on the Washita River. And uh, it's a nice open area. Of course, there's no facilities, but it's a cool place to check out. And if you want to take a break there, it's a good place to take that break. And then you're going to leave there and you're going to head through some towns and, and a bunch more dirt roads and you're headed to Morrow State Park. This is also a cool state park. It's a good place to take a break. And if you want to camp there, it's an awesome campground too. And they also have cabins and all that kind of stuff. You're going to leave Morrow State Park and you're going to go through Fessenthal National Forest. Uh, there's going to be places like Prairie Island, Crossett Harbor, and Pine Island. There's primitive and dispersed campsites, and uh, some of these places, uh, I believe it was Crossett Harbor, uh, have full hookups. You're going to go from the Fessenthal National Forest, and you're going to be in the Upper Washita National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, there's also uh, primitive camping and stuff like that in this area. You're going to leave uh, the Washita National Wildlife Refuge. And we went to, and the trails are going to take you to Kim and A. Hot State Park. That's where we stayed the night. Awesome state park, and uh, it's known for a great big cypress tree that's kind of hollow at the base, and you can actually kayak up in the the cypress tree and, and check it out. It's really cool. It's huge. So that's something that you want to check out if you have the time. And like I said, this is over 300 miles and 27 sections. So to see it all, you're going to want at least a two-day weekend. Uh, even better if you have more. Uh, after you leave the state park there at Kim and A. Hot, so you're going to go into Bass Drop. That's where we ate and I got some refreshments and restocks and stuff that we used out of our icebox. So you're in Louisiana at this point. 
Well, I guess you've been at Louisiana since you was at the state park. But you're going to uh, leave Bastrop and you're going to cut around the uh, south end of the Washita National Wildlife Refuge. You're going to go over a river and you're going to start heading back north on the uh, west end of the Washita River. And as you go up there on the west side, you're going to have a lot of gravel dirt roads. Some of these roads can be pretty bad, uh, even dry. Uh, some of them was rutted up pretty good and we had to take our time and choose our line. Uh, we did make this complete route in this Cherokee Trailhawk that's behind me with zero issues. We did have some places we forded water that was close to our limit of 22 inches. Uh, we did run into some water areas that was too high for us to cross. And uh, if you make this trip, if you can ford the water, or if it's drier when you go, where our tra route or trail ended, go ahead and finish, because uh, it's gonna dead end, but go ahead and finish the trail to the end, and you're gonna see some stuff that we didn't get to see when we made the, the trip. Uh, but as you, as you go up the west side of the uh, Washita River, you're going to run into another little park uh, called Tossum Bayou, and you're going to head back into the Festenthal National Forest area, and you're going to go to Festenthal Lock and Dam, another cool place to check out. There's also a full hookup campground there. And uh, after you leave that Lock and Dam, like I said, you're going to cut through some more forest and you're going to head back to Morrow State Park. Morrow State Park is where we ended the trip or ended the route. And, uh, you know, there's restrooms and all that there. So we took a refreshment break there before we headed home. Now, uh, Morrow State Park has a cool river, river ferry there that you want to check out while you're in that park. And like I said, it was an awesome trip. Uh, can be very dusty in these dry climates, so be prepared for that. Uh, cell section was in and out. Most areas we did have some type of cell, uh, cell reception. Now, the point of this video, other than kind of tell you about the trip, is we're going to do a giveaway, and we're going to post the information on our Facebook group for the Arkansas Overland Route Trailhawk Loop. Now, the Arkansas Overland Route, the first part of it is what I basically call the Arkansas Overland Route. And then, the later part of it that goes through the Fessel National Forest and the Washita Wildlife Management Area, that area there forms the shape of a hawk. So I call that Trailhawk Loop, but it's all one overland route. Okay, so if you want to do it in sections, that's fine. But to do the giveaway, you have to complete the whole loop. Okay, and uh, we want you to take pictures throughout the, the loop so we know you did the whole loop. And we'd like you to include yourself or your vehicle in the pictures. Now, we have 27 videos or 26 videos on our YouTube page, our YouTube channel. For each section of this route, and you'll see where we took some of our pictures. Uh, in Falcon Bottoms, the very first part, there's a real cool uh, oil rig set up, and we pulled up beside it and took the pictures. So there's going to be awesome photo opportunities on this. So we want you to take as many pictures as you can. We want you to share them on the Facebook group page. And the first one that does this route, because no one's posted that they've done the route yet. I know it's really hot, no gas prices are up, and a lot of people are waiting for that to change. Uh, but for the first one who shares their trip and completes this whole route, we're gonna give away some stickers that I'll be uh, posting the pictures. And I also have a coffee cup, stainless steel whole uh, cup that I am making. It's gonna be epoxied, and it's on its final epoxy coat and it's going to have 
this sticker on it that glows in the dark. This one does not glow in the dark, but the one that's on the cup is going to glow in the dark. And it's also going to have our sticker for Outdoors for Adventure, and it will glow in the dark also. It also has a little bit of glitter in it. It kind of has an ocean wave look. Well, I'm just going to post a picture of the mug. Like I said, it's still on the turner on its final process. And uh, I'll post that little video of the cup so you'll see what it looks like. But it, it's going to be a cool cup. It turned out really nice. And I use one of these hog uh, coffee cups myself. And it is my go-to cup. And uh, I, I use it all the time and have for quite a while now. But anyway, uh, we're going to do the giveaway. Like I said, just post the pictures. If you have a YouTube channel and you do a YouTube video, be sure to post your YouTube link on the group page so everybody can go watch that. Uh, the more uh, people that are sharing their information and their, of their trip uh, on the group page, that's going to be uh, cool. Uh, don't be afraid to check each other's channels out and subscribe. And remember that all these sections Mainly the videos that I did are of the road conditions because I wanted y'all to see what you're getting into uh, On this route, you don't have to worry about pin stripes and stuff like that. Do be sure to carry plenty of water with you uh, But anyway, I'm going to end this video. I think I covered everything. I'll have more information about the giveaway for the first person who uh, does the route and shares it on our group page if two people happen to post at the same time, uh, we'll just have to do a tiebreaker because this is only going to be for one person. And uh, later on down the road, we'll see how this goes and uh, maybe we'll do something else for the route. Uh, I am in the process. You're going to see the stickers and the cup. And uh, I have actually have made me a t-shirt about the route with basically this design on the shirt if you can see that but anyway uh we do have a online store we really haven't pushed the store uh we've just got some mugs that we've made listed right now but i am going to start and, and that's for enjoyable collections uh store name so we're going to have a section for outdoors for adventure where we're going to do up some mugs and do up some of our stuff and put that on there. Now when, I don't know, this is uh, something we're just now starting to get worked out, but do look forward to that and if y'all want, uh, if y'all want a sticker that you've done this route, just drop me a message on uh, Facebook Messenger and you know for probably about three bucks. I'll throw a sticker together and mail it out to you and you know we'll work all that out uh, person to person and messenger until I get the store put up and we get the store put up you can just go to the store and look at the merchandise and if you want a t-shirt or, or whatever you know that'll be there so uh, look for that in the future but for now just get out there and do this route it's an awesome route we really enjoyed it I've done it in this Trailhawk Cherokee, so uh, the wife has a Compass Trailhawk, so I have the plan on when it cools down, we're going to take the Compass, and we're going to run the whole route in the Compass, because uh, like I said there's several camping areas that you can choose from, so you can swap up where you stay and what you do. There's several things that we passed up that we did not see because of the time limit, and we were busy trying to get all this map on onyx so uh anyway like i said it is on onyx uh it, it'd be easy to follow there's information about each trail uh i think everything you need to know is there and go to arkansas overland route trailhawk loop facebook group page and join that group and uh let's watch each other's adventures along this route don't forget to hit the subscribe button to our channel Thank you for watching. Let's get that route done.
Thank you.